Welcome back everyone. So we're going to take a closer look at the Held to Maturity Securities. And I've got an example here that we can look at with the numbers and the journal entries. So looking at it, it says January 9th, 2009, Matrix Inc. purchased as an investment $1 million of 10% 10-year bonds interest paid semi-annually. The market rate for similar bonds is 12%. So right now, if the market rate's paying 12, your bond is only offering 10%, you already know you're dealing with a discount. Um, that you have to that you have to offer a discount. Otherwise, why would anybody buy your bond, right? If the market's paying 12. So the first thing you have to do is if you're buying this bond, you have to look at what the present value is of the bond. It's a million dollars is the future value, but we're going to be looking at the present value and we'll be using those present value tables that you worked on in Intermediate 1. So if you look at this, you can see the interest. You're being paid $50,000 in interest and it's an ordinary annuity because it's being paid at the end of each period of one dollar with your n being 20. Well your n is 20 because it's 10 year bond and it's paid semi-annually. That means 20 payouts and your i is 6 percent and the reason it's 6 percent is because you're going to be using the effective rate to discount it and 12 percent is for an entire year but again since we're looking semi-annually the i that you're going to be using the interest rate is 6 percent. Um, just a reminder, interest is always principal times interest times time, right? And the interest payouts that you're getting, you're getting a million dollars, that's your principal, times the interest rate of 10%, and the fact that you're paying it semi-annually means it's divided by two, right? Because interest is always stated as an annual number. So you've got one million dollars times 10% times, if you want, six twelfths or one half, whatever, whatever works for you. All right, that gives you the interest rate of $50,000. Well, the question is, is what is that $50,000 worth today? What is the present value of that amount? And you'd use your ordinary annuity tables that you can locate in the back of your book, or if you have an e-book, it's in one of the appendices. So the present value of those interest payments is $573,496. I'm going to trust that the book calculated it properly. The principal amount is going to be a million dollars because that's what you're going to get at the end of 10 years. So you're going to use the present value of one because we want to know what that value is of that million dollars that's going to be paid out in 10 years. We want to know what that's worth today. So you're again going to go but to the back of the book. Your present value is, well, present value of one. Your N is 20 and your I is 6%. So you're doing the same type of discounting here. All right, I say you're using the effective interest rate is what I mean by that. So looking at the two together, the interest and principal are worth today $885,301. All right, now that's an important number to note because if you click forward a slide, that $885,301 is the amount of cash that we're paying out for that bond. So we're going to credit cash for $885,301 because we're buying the bond, but we are going to record the bond for the full million dollars that it's worth, right? Your investment in bonds is going to be debited for a million dollars. The offsetting piece here is going to be the discount, that 114.699. All right, so that's how we record these to begin with. And let me put them in a T account for you to kind of illustrate where we're going with this. All right, so this should be fun because I'm using a new tool. I'm using a sketch pad, which means my terrible handwriting gets to be recorded for all eternity. So we have our investment in bonds. And I'm going to shorthand this because, as you can tell, my tool is not so wonderful nor is my handwriting. And you've got a million dollar investment in bonds. All right, and I'm gonna do it just like that too, because as I said, it's not very easy to write with this. All right, and that is supposed to be a T for my T account. And your offsetting account is your discount on the bonds. And they are going to be contra accounts to one another. So you're going to record the discount piece for the 114,699, I believe the number was, 114,699, making the value of the bonds the 800, or not the value of the bonds, but the actually unamortized amount of the bonds, 885,301. All right. That's where you stand right now. So that's actually the value that's going to be recorded on your balance sheet is that 885301 because it's going to be the net of these two items. I mean, you could have them shown up netted together as for the 885301 or you could show it as investment in bonds 1 million less the 
discount on the bonds, the 114,699. Okay. All right, let's go back to the slide for a second. So that January 1st entry is the one I just journalized. I left out the cash piece. I don't really feel that that's necessary to show you at this point. I'm just trying to show you the bond piece of it. So if you look at what happens on June 30th, there's a couple of pieces here. You have this debit to cash for $50,000, and you've got a discount on bond investment, a debit to that of 3118 and a credit for investment revenue for 53118 and you might be saying to yourself, well, where's all that coming from? Well, the 50000 is the interest piece. And let me show you the calculation of that here. All right, so here we are, and I actually wrote something uh, to erase. All right, so let's look at this for a second. The $50,000 comes from the $1 million of principal times the interest rate of 12% times half a year, right? So that's your $50,000. That's how much cash you're actually getting, right? So you've got a debit to cash of $50,000. The more complicated piece to look at is really going, oh, I said 10%, I'm sorry. You're getting paid, let's see if I can fix that, 10%. That's what the amount of the bonds are, right? So the face value of the bonds is a million, the interest rate was 10% and it's for half a year. However, we are going to we are going to amortize the discount using the effective interest rate of the 12% amount. So in order to calculate the amortization of that 114, 699, the discount piece, what you're going to do is you're going to take the 855,000, 855,301, which is the net of these two here, the 1 million and the 114, 855,301 times the 6%, oh, sorry, I should say, let me, let's try that again, times 12% times half a year, all right? That's where I was coming up with the 6%. I was just shorthanding it. But basically, it's the interest rate, the full year of 12%, but it's only for half a year, so that's where the half piece is coming in. So 855,301 at 12% for half a year is going to calculate, calculate out to be 5311, and I can't read my own handwriting, 8. <laughs> 53,118, which if we go back to this, to the PowerPoint over here, we can see, whoops, you can see the 53,118, and that's the amount of revenue you're making. All right, the difference between the two is going to be the discount and bond investment being amortized. The difference between the cash received and the investment revenue is going to be the amortization of the discount on bond investment. So what that looks like, if we go back to my beautiful T accounts here, is we are going to start we are going to start amortizing this discount amount to be 3,118. All right, that's that piece there. So that makes our bond discount amount be now with the 114,699 uh, credit balance and debiting it for the 3,118. 111 581 I believe all right um, could be off I could be off because my handwriting's off but uh, <laughs> that's what I have in my notes 111 581 all right so now what we're gonna do is we do this every single time we have a payment right so every time you have a payment you're gonna do the journal entry for this obviously this amounts gonna change the 855 301 um, you're going to use the new book value times the 12% times one half, and you're going to do that every six months whenever you have a new payment. All right, so everything that you just talked about is this journal entry right here. And you can see there's a whole amortization table. Every time, as I said, you have a $50,000 payment, you would recalculate that revenue piece, the investment revenue, and the difference between the two is going to be the amortization, amortization piece of the discount. So if you look at it, they're asking you here, how would this investment appear on the balance sheet after one period of discount of amortization? Well, we've got the million dollars in bonds less the amount of the discount on bond investment at this point, which is the same as we have right there, the 111,581. So the book value, or the amortized cost, is $888,419. And that's the amount that would be recorded on your balance sheet as the asset. So we're gonna take this thing now one step further and then we'll finish up the health maturity section. So let's say it's December 31st, 2009, we receive our payment, right? So here's our cash, the $50,000. The 
the discount on bond investment, the 3305, and the investment revenue. And let's show how we calculate that in a, I'll put it down in a second. Let me just pause this. <laughs> All right, so the net book value at this point, as we decided, I've changed my writing tool here, 888, 419. Whoops, four, it's harder to write on this than you would think, 419. <laughs> All right, that's where we stand right now, 888,419. So that is gonna be the amount we use when we do our calculation again, because it's December 31st and we're getting paid again. So 888,419, I think I'm gonna switch back to my thicker tool in a second, but times 12% times one half, right? Or you could just use 6%. I'm just trying to show you the typical principal interest time piece here. So 888,419 times basically 6% will give you the amount of, let's see, 53,305. All right, so with that 53,305, we know that 3305 of it is amortization of bond discount. All right, so now we have 111,581 minus the 3305, and that's gonna give us an amount in here of 108,276. <clears throat> All right, that's where we stand right now. We've got a million dollar bond investment and a $108,276 in bond discount. Okay, I got rid of a little bit of the scrabble, scribble scrabble here. So you've got a million dollars in investment in bonds and you've got 108,276 is now the unamortized discount on bonds remaining. And in our example, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sell this and we're gonna sell it for $900,000 cash. So I always like to start with cash in my journal entries because cash is cash and there's no two ways about what cash, how much cash you're getting. So here's your debit to cash for $900,000. We're gonna take the investment in bonds off the books for a million dollars. We're gonna take the discount in the bond investment off the books for 108,276. And our gain on the sale of investment was $8,276. All right, so if you had the T accounts, you would have seen that the value of this right here would have been, what, um, a little bit less than $900,000. I'm sorry, yeah, a little bit less than $900,000. So when we sold it for $900,000, we had a gain. And that gain is right here for that $1,276. Okay, I mean, the really, the important piece of this whole thing is realizing how you're calculating the discount on the bond investment. And the other piece is how you're recording it on your balance sheet. All right, next section, we're gonna move on to the other uh, trading securities and securities available for sale.